Welcome back to End Times Prophecy News. My name is Brother Jim, reporting here from Red State. Breaking news, President Trump to hold a rally. We are going to put America back to work. We're going to put people before government. Join me in Florida this Saturday at 5 p.m. for a rally at the Orlando Melbourne International Airport. Hey, I'd like to go, but why do I have to pay money? Sorry. I already pay taxes to see you, Donald Trump. <laughs> Breaking news, it's happening. Trump's draft executive order on welfare is about to change everything, folks. A copy of draft executive order reported by the Washington Post earlier this month has been circling around cabinet members and has posed some questions that are making liberals everywhere panic. Conservative Tribune reported that the order calls for immigrants likely to need certain types of public aid to be identified prior to entry and for immigrants already using those services to be deported. The draft order also requires strict financial responsibility for relatives who promise to support immigrants who are instead now relying on social aid. The potential savings estimated by the order are as high as $100 billion, although little data exists to support that figure. That is a huge amount of money. Welfare is a way of life for too many immigrants. According to the Center for Immigration Studies, all immigrants, legal and illegal, are more likely than native-born people to use some form of welfare. Those who have U.S.-born children make far greater use of the system. We should be welcoming immigrants with open arms, not an open wallet. Liberals are losing their minds over the idea that we might inject some economic realism into our immigration policies. He, Trump, would literally be taking food out of the mouths of babes, Kevin Appleby of the Center for Migration Studies told the Washington Post. Perhaps instead of reaching out to immigrants the moment they set foot on our soil to connect them with social service programs, we need to be connecting them with jobs the minute they arrive. Very true, huh? Bad news for refugees seeking asylum in Canada now. <laughs> Canada has a cap on the amount of refugees it can take in. The Conservative Tribune reported, while President Donald Trump has been taking action to limit the flow of refugees into American until a new vetting process can be put in place, Canada has been welcoming refugees with open arms to a point. In the wake of Trump's immigration executive order, many refugees have fled for Canada from the United States in the hopes that they could settle there instead, the New York Times reported. The only problem with this plan is that Canada has a cap on how many refugees they will admit to the country, so if too many more start flooding into Canada, they could very well be rejected. Under the safe third country agreement between the United States and Canada, Refugees who apply for asylum first in one country cannot then apply for asylum in the other. That means refugees crossing from the United States into Canada cannot simply apply for asylum at a border crossing point, according to the Daily Caller. Ouch! <laughs> Breaking news, Defense Department considering huge move in Syria that could change the lives of Americans forever. Please share and comment if you are for or against this. The Defense Department is considering the recommendation of sending ground troops to Syria. CNN.com reports the Defense Department might propose that the U.S. send conventional ground combat forces into northern Syria for the first time to speed up the fight against ISIS, CNN has learned. It's possible that you may see conventional forces hit the ground in Syria for some period of time, one defense official told CNN. They'll probably wipe them out quick because they're not getting any more weapons because old bummer's gone. But the official emphasized that any decision is ultimately up to President Donald Trump, who has ordered his defense secretary to come up with a proposal to combat ISIS before the end of the month. And breaking its official another vacancy for Trump to fill. Oh my gosh. No, it's Andy Puzder again has made it official and withdrawn his nomination. I am withdrawing my nomination for Secretary of Labor. I'm honored to have been considered and am grateful to all who have supported me. After careful consideration and discussions with my family, 
I am withdrawing my nomination for Secretary of Labor. I am honored to have been considered by President Donald Trump to lead the Department of Labor and put America's workers and businessmen, businesses back on a path to sustainable prosperity. I want to thank I want to thank President Trump for his nomination. I also thank my family and my many supporters, employees, businesses, friends, and people who have voiced their praise and hopeful optimism for the policies and new thinking I would have brought to America as Secretary of Labor. While I won't be serving in the administration, I fully support the President and his highly qualified team. Sad. Breaking news, Aetna CEO has just delivered a devastating blow to Obamacare again today. What is that like? Four blows to Obama? Man, you're going to run out of tears, Obama. Aetna CEO Mark Bertolin has referred to the Affordable Care Health Care Act as a death spiral, stating that as premiums increase, healthier individuals drop out. Following Humana's decision to drop out of Obamacare, Aetna is now putting into consideration decreasing its presence in the market, Bloomberg reports. Aetna Chief Executive Officer Mark Bertolini escalated his criticism of the Affordable Care Act, saying Obamacare's markets are nearly failure as premiums climb and healthier individuals drop out. It is in a death spiral, Bertolini said in a video interview with the Wall Street Journal that aired Wednesday on the newspaper's website. He predicted that more insurers will drop out of the market for 2018, following Humana's Incorp's decision to quit Obamacare entirely for next year. Aetna, too, is mulling whether to further reduce its presence in the market set up by ACA. The company cut its footprint to four states for this year from 15 after losing about $450 million on sales of Affordable Care Act plans last year. It's all affordable for everyone. <laughs> Thank you for listening.